Morning all. This is a quick review uh, and an unboxing of my Sieg Mill and it is the Sieg SX2P. Uh, it's the newer of the level two. There's multiple mo uh, levels and ranges on the Sieg Mills. Uh, the two has, I think, three or four variances. This is the latest one, which has the uh, brushless motor. Uh, a lot of fun. Never owned a mill before, so you'll see me playing around with it. I even do a bit of a rundown uh, and mill down a bit of mild steel uh, a little later, which uh, I found out a bit afterwards. It was actually 10.45, so not, not mild, but a little bit of carbon steel. Um, way too fast. Having never used it before, I, uh, I had the mill running too fast and actually uh, took the tips off that, that mill. Um, and I've learned a bit since then. So I will be following this video up with more videos of uh, me actually milling and using the mill properly. So here we go. Look at the new mill, it's literally double the weight of the lathe, it's crazy. Okay, got the lathe sort of set up where I want it to be, I'm not definite about the position, but I might end up rotating it around, I don't know yet. So, what I actually took the bulk of the time was cleaning all the packing grease off. The grease is just so thick and ended up even wearing gloves, like I was so covered in grease, it's crazy. I didn't want to go mad and use like brake cleaner and to get it off, because obviously it will start to rust, but I will obviously always oil it when I use it, but I left the grease on, just scrubbed it off with a dry cloth. And I've done that everywhere. But um, it's actually a really cool mill. I've never owned a mill before, so I might be being a little carried away here, but it does pretty much everything I want it to. I've taken this guard off temporarily. I don't know whether I'll put that back on again. Basically, it, it, it works like a drill if you want it to be a drill. I can just, just have a vise on there or anything and just drill anything out of it, but I'm gonna change this for the collet type and take this actual uh, chuck out. But I haven't put these these knobs or anything in yet, which uh, I might do. What I wanna show you is all of this extra bits and pieces. So this is what comes with the unit itself. So you get your nice cheap bottle again, like normal, your oil bottle, which I don't know. <laughs> it's an extra for them to put in there, I think. What have we got this time? We've got a three, four, five, and six Allen key again. Same as we did on the lathe. Uh, we've got a couple more of these spanners. These are actually really nice spanners. They're solid. They feel like a nice, smooth, drop forge spanner. Obviously, I'm yet to use them, but I like them. They're a pretty high quality spanner in my opinion, and I love black, so uh, how can you go wrong? You got uh, what looks like a collet spanner another another spanner which is a 10 mil you can never have too many 10 mil spanners in my opinion a uh, couple of those screws which i think are to convert over to the collet type oh no they're not they're for the knobs t four little t-bar uh thingies for fixing fixing down to the bed of the mill itself and uh, these are all extras I bought. So here's, there's a chuck key, obviously, for the chuck. We've got a handle. It's not threaded. So I don't actually know what that handle's for. But we'll work that one out. We might have to read the dreaded instructions, which will be a sad day. But these ones are a little step up from the ones on the lathe. They're made of steel, which 
ones on the lathe are plastic, but well, we'll upgrade those at some point. So these are just little rotary handles that we use obviously to spin the wheel because it makes it significantly easier to turn it than it does to hold onto this and turn it slowly. So that one and then same for in like stopper so that you can adjust and see sort of stop this going down any further I think that's what that's for so far that seems to be the job that will do there's a good amount of adjustment in it you can adjust it come over here you've got a lock screw there which just stops the thread turning so that this can't go up and down but when you loosen that off you can obviously adjust it up and down like that but if you want to adjust over sort of millimeters you can you can lo loosen this off and slide that into place and then the adjustment is done via this mini adjustment knob you can see it's just turning a little tiny bit when i do it and it's only just adjusting the height by very small amounts so that you can get real precision precision on it rather than just like an old like a drill with this sort of precision which is very cool so i actually was trying to work out how to move it myself and my 10 year old boy went what about that screw is it that and he was right it was exactly that because he's a very very smart cookie isn't that right, dude? Yeah. <laughs> He's also my cameraman, which is very cool. Leland the cameraman. Works in the workshop. Leland's just got his own grinder recently. Look, show him your grinder with your name on it, dude. All right, so uh, it's 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 a pretty serious piece of kit. Figured out what this does. In fact, again, Leland figured out what this does. It has a hole there, which obviously means you can, when you take this cap off up here, and you put you would you loosen that off to drop this chuck out so that then you can put the collet type chuck in your uh, this stops it spinning while you're doing it so i'm going to be using mine as a mill not not a drill press i have two other drill presses and i don't need uh the drill press in that way so i'm going to change this for the collet type so i'm going to have end mills in mine uh so Take that off, I'm gonna come closer, show that. Just take the cover off, it's a bit stiff, but I just managed to wiggle it and yank it off. And then they supply with a spanner and they supply a pin, which is here. And the pin just drops into this hole so you can support it. And then all you're doing is just cracking that nut off. But you just wanna make sure that nut is, um, as, as you loosen that off, you're just giving the, the bolt a little tap down, which sometimes they can be much harder. Mine, the first time I did it, I had to give it, not a whack, but a pretty reasonable tap with a very small hammer to get it out. Um, I was a bit scared, didn't want to break it, but it came out okay. And you end up with, obviously, your, uh, I, I think it's still called a Morse taper, like it is on a lathe. So I change my one of them for, for this. Um, I obviously don't want it to be getting stuck in there so I want to make sure it's relatively greased up I'm going to just whack a bit of the grease from the last one on there you don't want heaps on there but and there's still quite a lot of grease inside and then drop the bolt back down inside same procedure lock it back up again But then now I've got this, the collets, I can pick whatever collet I want. And so I'll just eeny, meeny, miny, mow this one for the moment. I'll get a uh, 16 mil collet, brand new as you can see. Never been out of the packet. And these things are essentially, they're, they're steel, but they're cut with several slots. They go all the way from the top to almost all the way to the bottom. 
and then the next one goes the opposite direction. So essentially what you're doing is kind of a similar technology to a slinky, but made of steel. It allows it to sort of squash down, even though it's steel. So you can't really do it by hand, but essentially all you're doing is putting it up inside the collet chuck. And then putting this bit back on and by clamping this up it squeezes that up inside the taper which tightens it so now we can put any sort of end mill we want that's going to fit into that in there and tighten it up so in my case i bought this set and i like i said i bought a whole set so that i can figure out what i what i use most of and then i'll replace the ones that i break or the ones that i dull so this will actually should close this up surprisingly well. So like if I if I nip that up with my hands, I can't get that in there. So I just need to loosen it off enough that this will fit. And you just push the the bit up there until the sort of only the gold is showing, and then just lock it up with the spanner that's provided, which is this one. It locks up and that makes that sure that's tight and it's not going to go anywhere and you can either put a big fat spanner on there or you can just use this to nip that up you don't have to go too mad just it always remember to put this cover on because this is spinning at pretty high frequency the last thing you want to do is like lean over and get your hair or your hoodie thingies stuck in it or you get your face dragged into it which is the reason why this needs to have its cover back on it too so you don't get anything stuck in there so so just nip that up. All right. And that's how you change from a chuck to a collet. And the same as if you're just changing the end mill or the collet to a different size collet. You do it in the same way. What you haven't seen is the thing running. So power is on. We uh, start a bit lower and whack the power on. It should go. Got a slow start. It's on very slow, so you can run it incredibly slowly, I reckon. Because it's, yeah, look at that, it's almost off. So that's two and a half thousand RPM. So I bought one of these adjustable, uh, they pivot, which is pretty cool, milling vices. So I'm predominantly going to be doing knives, so I can imagine I'm going to use this the bulk of the time. So I think I will fit this uh, to use most of the time. Well, with all that messing around, should we uh, mill something? This is the first time I've ever milled anything, so if it all goes bang, then I've done something wrong, but I'm hoping that doesn't happen. So I've thrown a, a chunk of old steel in the new vise and I'm gonna clamp it down. I've stuck a couple of parallels under there just to bring it up in height and make it uh, flat-ish. So I suppose This is just mild steel, I think. I don't really know. I'm just going to turn this micro dial, I think. So I could do the top one, but because I'm sort of new to this, I'm going to play with the micro dial and just wind it down. And uh, see what we get.
all that messing around tells me I don't know what I'm doing, but that's the point I'm learning this. Um, sort of seeing where I'm, I'm getting. But, for a person who has no idea what I'm doing, I'm really very happy with that. And you can see here, like, where I've gone a little too deep on both ends trying to work out what I'm doing, but also, these cheap end mill bits, I don't know, I probably did something wrong, I don't know, but I think I've actually already blunted that one. <laughs> but, uh, but, this is the reason why I bought a cheap set, so I could sort of learn what I was doing before I ended up with really expensive stuff that I, I would regret uh, the damaging of. So, so that is the SX2P Mini Mill from Sieg. I'm very happy with that, and I feel like if you knew what you were doing, you could do a blinking good job with it. So, stands flat. But as you can see, yeah, I'm gonna have to make some sort of guard for it because she's a bit of a mess already. Throws chips all over the place. You can see these chips everywhere. Awesome. Thanks very much for watching that, guys. If you liked that, please uh, make sure you uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel, uh, and look at last week's video where I did a review and a bit of an unboxing on my Sieg lathe, the, uh, the SX3. No, not necessary. Whatever the hell it's called. Have a look at last week's. Uh, great little mill. Having lots of fun using it. Um, I will continue to do videos as I learn how to use the mill and the lathe a bit better and uh, do a few sort of simple tutorials and that sort of thing. And you guys can watch me learn and maybe learn along with me. Thanks very much. Give us a thumbs up and uh, and subscribe. Also share this video if you're on any mill or, or lathe groups. Um, people often ask about different types of mills and lathes. If you found this one useful, please share it. Thanks very much. Uru. What's that? I don't know. It's like a giant ugly spanner, so that's all. Some screws. So mm -hmm. That's probably... Oh, that's for fixing stuff down there. Oh, this is the vice. So that's the vice handle. That's why it's such a serious looking thing. You get that out on your own? Roll the box out. Okay, so... Vice, so it actually swivels that way so it can turn on its axis and then obviously fixes down to the bed that way lift up that way and then opens it's nice and nice and smooth looks pretty well cast it doesn't look too nasty pretty happy with that. You don't have to keep opening it, buddy. No, I was closing it. Yeah, you're closing it's not it. Opening anymore. So the castings look pretty good. Not not unhappy with those. Even underneath, a lot of stuff that you buy, Chinese stuff, is sort of still has some sand and whatnot in the casting. Like it doesn't look all that good. But this is doesn't look like there's too much filler in it or anything. Which often you do get couple of rough lines but a pretty good little vice. Uh, so this is the uh, set for, for, um, for clamping down the anything and everything really. It's like a universal clampy set. Probably instead of opening it, it's probably easier to show you the front of the box. Um, the right way up. There we go, just like that. It comes with six T-slot nuts, six flange nuts, six four coupling nuts, uh, four coupling nuts, six step clamps, 12 step blocks, 24 studs of various different lengths. So you can pretty much, regardless of what you want to clamp down to the bed, you'll always be able to do it. It's probably massive overkill for me, to be honest. I'll probably use like one or two of those things, but it'll go in a cupboard and I'll never have uh, run out of, don't cut it, something. I'll never run out of ways of clamping stuff down. Let's bring it over here. The box is broken, this thing. Is it? Okay. 
So these are the collets for the milling for the, uh, the, the milling collet chucks. Why is that wrong? Oh yeah, it's a little it. So it's got one of these sort of plastic safe tubs which has actually had a, a bit of a whack already. But that's a right one coat. So that's the collet chuck. We've got their spanner for it. And then several of the different size collets to get you right the way up from where do we go from? It looks like a bottle opener. It looks like a bottle opener? It's not a bottle opener, it's the spanner for this tool. So we go from mm. anyway, small to big. And then this is the other thing that I got from them, just so I didn't end up with not having the things that I need. So, this is a fluted like, mill set, meaning that I can pretty much do everything I want. And I figured I'd start with one of these cheap end mill sets that um that sort of had every size in it that I might ever want. And I'm the oh, that's fallen through. That's all it is. And then basically, as I went on, oops, so buddy. As I went on, I would realise I would work out what ones. I really need and what ones I don't and I can just replace the ones I really want 